Okay, let's finish off our map. In terms of following the geographical conventions, we have bolts B for border, we've already included our border, O for orientation, which is our north point or latitude and longitude line. For this map, all you need is a north point. The north point is usually located in the top right hand corner of a map. Easy to do, insert, shapes, choose the arrow, and again, shift key allows us to ensure that it goes at 90 degrees. So click and drag. If I move it around, it only goes to 45 or 0 degrees, or the opposite. Um, but it ensures that I don't get it slightly off balance. Once you're done, press click, and it sets your arrow. I now want to change it to white so that I can actually see the arrow against the background. I'm going to move it down a little bit using my arrow keys. And I'm now going to insert the N for North Point. As I did before, just as a text box, simple text box. We don't want a flamboyant N, we're not creating a pirate map. Again, whilst we're clicked on that box, we go Shape, Fill, No Fill, No Outline, and we change our text to white. Click and drag it over our arrow, and use your arrow keys on your keyboard to position it so that it's centered and above your arrow. Obviously the arrow should be pointing to the north. Now the other thing, we've got bolts, border, orientation, legend. To create a legend, click off the map and press enter a couple of times just to give us some space to use a table to create our legend or key. A legend or key has a minimum of two columns. The first column is where we insert our symbols and our second column is where we insert our descriptions. So I'm just going to create a 2 by 4 column to start off with. I think I'll actually need a 2 by 5 column, but let's start at this point. Now I don't want a legend that, that is that enormous. So if once I get my cursor so that I have double line and two arrows on there, I click and I drag it across so that it forms a square. I do the same to the end of my table, click and drag it across because I won't need it to be that big. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to choose one of my red dots, doesn't matter which one, the easiest one to pick up. I'm going to copy and paste it and I'm going to click off, it's easy to get my cursor right. I'm then going to drag it so that it's located centrally and I'm going to use my little arrow keys to make sure I'm happy with its positioning. Before I do much else, I want to make sure that my font size is about right. It doesn't need to be big. So if I click on that little box in the top left hand corner, it allows me just then to highlight the whole table and I use my small a to reduce the font size, as you can see every time I click on it, down to about nine points. Now it means that my circle needs to be moved a little bit so that it's located again, still center in that box. And this is a data collection site. I do not want to create a, a symbol that has two lines to it. So I'm just going to click and drag it out a little bit so that everything fits on one line. One of the next most important things we need to highlight is obviously the creek. Insert, sorry, click on my table. Insert shape. Just use a straight line and draw your straight line from one edge to the next. Now we're going to change our shape outline. It's going to be blue, just like the blue that we've got. And we're also going to change its weight to the same weight that we used on our um, creek. I need to drag mine out a little bit more so make sure that it fits in. And I've overstepped the bark, mark a little bit. What I can do if I'm getting a bit frustrated is I can change the size of it down here. And you can see I've now fitted it in. So this is my creek. Same thing to create 
a label for our footpath. So again, shape, line, just a straight line through the middle from one end to the other. My outline, I'm going to make it grey, fairly middle grey. And again, I'm going to change the weight to more accurately resemble the line that's on my map. Sorry. Move that a little bit. So this is a footpath. Now the only other thing that's really of interest here are our streets. So I'm going to insert a symbol for the street. Again, it's another straight line, very easy to do, all the way across. My outline is that same colour grey, the mid-grey, but my weight is going to be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to take it up to six points. It's fairly well centred, just a little bit above, and I'm going to put street. Now there is one thing missing. I need a heading at the top of this. Um, so I'm going to go to the top row, right click, and we can see insert row above. Now to put the word key or legend up there, I really don't need that box to the left. So if I highlight those two cells, I right click, I pick merge, it joins them together and I can press the center to go key. So my key's now completed. I need to drop it onto my map. So what I do again is I roll my cursor over it and that square comes up. If I click and drag, it should allow me to move it onto my map. Now as we move it onto the map, we notice that there's a problem. We really can't read it very well. So again, clicking on that little box beside our table, we're going to right click and we're going to fill our table maybe with white or even with grey, but white probably stands out a little bit better away from the background. Our key needs to be located somewhere where it's not obscuring any information that we need. And of course, it cannot touch the border or go outside the border of our map. So if you have a little play with it, make sure it doesn't go over the Dundas Street West sign or anything else that's of interest. And you have your legend and your orientation done.